What I have here is a scratch built steam engine. Uh, as I enjoy finding old magazine articles on building an engine and then building it, to see if it works. This one works. This was 1950, Popular Science, December 1950, article called Scraps and Solder Become an Engine. And basically, you took uh, scraps of brass tubing and sheet, some brass sheet metal and you made up a little frame and you use a, they use a big washer for a flywheel and it has a rotary type of valve where it's just a pin the straight hole going into the cylinder on the cylinder head and then another hole that comes in from the side of the pin and then goes at an angle I think it says 40 degrees from the intake hole and that becomes the exhaust. Alternately lets in the steam pressure and then exhausts it as the piston comes back to top dead center. I used an eccentric in mine. I definitely use scraps. The frame, the main frame here, is one of these in engine mounts. I have cast a lot of these <clears throat> used as displays for model airplane engines that I collect. So that's the frame here. The thing about that frame, it's there's nothing square on this. It's just cobbled it together and stuck it in the sand and I like the way it came out. So uh, I had to machine it to square it up. When I first made this, I just took a piece of uh, an old lawnmower deck and I bolted that, I cut it out, sanded it, and then bolted it to the front of this thing like this. And I had a piece of uh, steel tubing that I brazed to the front. And then I made a cylinder head here. So I brazed a chunk of steel to another piece of steel so I could make the head removable right here. And you can see the valve. The valve is a 5 16 bolt. The connecting rod is a quarter 20 bolt. The crankshaft I just brazed up from pieces of 5 16 steel rod and some 1 8 inch sheet. This flywheel, I didn't realize it until I just looked at it a little while ago. I cast this in 2001, 2001, and it had been laying around the shop and I never used it in anything. So. In 2011, when I first built this engine, there, there's a video in 2011 of this running boilerplate, no paint, nothing. I had stamped in the casting my initials and 01, so I assume that was 2001. The other day I was running it with the old, it had a real Rube Goldberg set up here for the connection to the valve. I had soldered a piece on of really thin sheet metal here and then that would go into a slot in this 5 16 piece of bolt that was cut off and then a screw would run that and this bolt goes down here on the on this pin and I was running it brrr, you know full speed ahead and it just stopped and I found out the connection was all bent and it just didn't look good it was really over complicated so I took a piece of uh, old casting cut off so when you when you do castings you have sprues when you pour your you pour your metal in that this would be the top of the mold you have these sprues sometimes i use these leftover pieces of aluminum for various things i made this uh, little pulley for this engine to run a generator because that's what the article says out of an old sprue work great this uh, piece here this clevis that was an old piece of metal cut off a casting. It was excess metal. And I should have made this out of a piece of brass or something. Bronze or brass. It would have been would have looked better. Anyway, it was definitely scrap. So you saw the original article from Popular Science. So I didn't use that article. I recently found this on Google. I had downloaded this 
It says in just two evenings you can build this palm-sized power plant. This is the original article, but it was published on john-tom.com, model steam plans page. I don't think it's there anymore. They took this down. It's always a thrill to build something that runs. This little steam engine has plenty of zip. I'm reading right from the article now. Plenty of zip. An eye-catching valve action hooked on a toy boiler or bicycle pump, an air tank or a carbon dioxide cylinder, it will run a model midget electric generator with enthusiasm, which it does, by the way. I ran the PM Research generator kit with this. So long as you use only air, CO2, or low pressure steam, you can safely assemble the engine with soft solder like the one shown. For above 15 pounds, better use silver solder, which is what I did. I brazed, everything on here is brazed. The cylinder is brass tubing, it's 9 16 bore. Mine is, 9 16 is what? 16th over a half inch. So this one is roughly double size. This is a one inch bore. I threw this together and remarkably it ran. And the other day I, when I was running it, this thing bent and it really wasn't adequate anyway. So I remade this, put it back together and it, it you know, it ran, but it still, I could see some things happening that weren't good. Over the past two days, I took it all apart, tried to get it done right. So here's the, all the things I did. The piston was a, a piece of cast iron from a window sash weight, just junk cast iron. So I cut the piston down by trimming a lot off the skirt and went inside the piston here and hollowed it out. It was much too heavy. This whole thing would just jerk on the really bad on the workbench when I ran it. And I added an oil ring to the piston, which the plans, the instructions say, make two oil rings. Then I squared up the frame. I took it all apart. I put the frame in the mill, and I squared it up on all four sides. The bottom was already pretty square. That allowed me to turn it over on its side, and I reboard the crankshaft bearing holes which were just that. They were just holes. There was no bearing. So I enlarged them out. And then I put 5 16 bronze bearings in there. So that, that helped. And the eccentric was inside the frame. So I had to have this big bend going out. So I decided to try moving it outside the frame. This way you can see it running, the eccentric doing its thing. It just allows easy access to uh, adjust the timing with the with this screw here on the eccentric. The plans didn't have an eccentric, just had a crank, 90 degrees to the other crank. So all the adjustment you had to do was here. So also on this little block here, I added a screw here. All right, now you can see it. A little bronze block here that allows you that has a, a lock a 348 lock screw in it so you can adjust this up and down it varies the amount the valve throw the amount the valve rotates so that's really good in fine-tuning this engine for maximum power or maximum speed all right what else did I do on this a lot of this I did this morning, some, some of this work. Straighten the crankshaft. The crankshaft had about 25,000, 26,000s run out. So I put the crankshaft in the, re in the lathe with a dial type indicator and straightened it. I drilled and tapped the flywheel for a 440 set screw. These had just been pressed in and they, after all these years of running since 2011, they'd become loose. I drilled and tapped the, the pulley for a set screw. And it's just, a, you know, it's a a grub screw, just a set screw, no no cap. So it goes down in there, doesn't uh, get in the way. Big screw sticking out. I'd like to do that to the eccentric too. 
I made a new spacer here for the valve. You can probably see that. Since I made the new valve clevis here, the gap that connects to the valve rod, I had to make a new spacer. This is it right here. This is the only thing holding it in. Otherwise, the valve would just slide out here and it stops running. So let's run it. So we'll see if it'll fire up. Now, Keith Appleton always warns that you should oil your engines before you run them. And I think that's a good idea. So get a little oil on here. Got my handy-dandy oil pen. I picked this up at the Cabin Fever Show back in January. I get the big end of the crank connecting rod. Here's the bearings with my new journals in there. A little bit here on the piston. A little bit for the valve and valve rod. Now I didn't notice this when I first when I first built this, but the article shows an oil cup on top of the cylinder. See that oil optional? Well, I didn't I didn't opt in on that. I'd like to add that. You can see the oiler there on top of the cylinder. I'm gonna put it right here, maybe with a uh, glass drip cup on there, and then some. I'd like to put some oilers, at the very least some holes, but some oilers, uh, tiny oil cups here, uh, tiny oil cups here on the bearings and perhaps a, a hole or a cup on the connecting rod big end. So with that in mind, let's see if it'll run. Got the air hooked up here, the valve. There it goes. And the action on this valve is awesome. That's pretty good. Scraps and solder. Let's 
see it's got some uh, black oil there still running in from all the mods I made. <laughs> 